right, hearing none, we will go on to item six. Report by Office of Cultural Affairs staff regarding monthly summary of current initiatives. All wards. Thank you, Chair Clevin. This is Rebecca Holden. For the record, in your binders, you all have a copy of the um, Word document of the staff report giving an update on the city's Percent for the Arts funded projects. And so in addition to that document, we'd like to present this PowerPoint, which contains updates on some of those projects and some additional public art initiatives happening outside of the Arts Commission and the Percent for the Arts program. But first off, we'd like to recognize some of our commissioners who are um, terming out. And so I wanted to make sure we, we put something in the staff report because last month's meeting with not having a quorum, I got worried because some of our commissioners were terming out. So uh, we want to recognize today David Tupaz, who is appointed by Mayor Goodman and has served in the term um, from March 2014 through April 2022. Um, and so we thank you for serving far beyond your original appointment, and we thank you for that. Uh, member John Trimble as well was appointed also in March of 2014 and um, is terming out as well and just continues to serve until we have a reappointment for Commissioner Trimble. And then member Paul Loudon as well, Commissioner Loudon, uh, appointed by Councilwoman Fiore, and their term was um, September 2018 through September 2022, and they'll also continue to serve until we can have an appointment, um, until replacement is appointed. But we just wanted to make sure we recognize those commissioners as they're outgoing, and so first up. Um, <laughs> John Pacheco, come back, David Tupaz. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'd like to recognize you, Commissioner Tupaz. The City of Las Vegas thanks you, uh, Arts Commissioner David Tupaz, for over eight years of service on the Las Vegas Arts Commission as a representative of the community. And Commissioners Tupaz, Commissioner Tupaz's work and the advocacy for the arts in partnership with the mayor for the betterment of the community has not gone unnoticed, truly. And so many thanks to Commissioner Tupaz for your dedicated service to support the arts in Las Vegas. We do have swag bags for all of our outgoing commissioners oh. today. Um, so those on the phone will be sure and hold yours until you can attend in person. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank the Arts Commission, the Office of Cultural Affairs, and of course the City of Las Vegas for giving me this opportunity to be of service to our community. It's been an honor, and not only did I learn much or did I feel like I matter, is I also gained tons of friends. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is this a ticket to Paris? <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, this is Laura Machado. We would also like to thank uh, Arts Commissioner John Trimble for over eight years of service on the Las Vegas Arts Commission. As a representative of the Ward 5 community, Commissioner Trimble's work with and for the Ward 5 community as an advocate for the arts has not gone no unnoticed. Many thanks to Commissioner Trimble for his dedicated service to support the arts in Las Vegas. John Trimble, are you on the line? I am. Thank you so much for your service. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> David said everything I feel. Um, it was an honor to work with you and um, just to work with the city and be of service. And um, I've learned a lot. And it's just been an honor to uh, just make a difference and beautify the city. And I thank you, everyone who's there. And everyone who I served with I made a lot of friends, a lot of acquaintances, and I wouldn't change a thing. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, 
This is, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> this is Mary Sabo, uh, the City of Las Vegas. <clears throat> Thanks Arts Commissioner Paul Loudon for over four years of service on the Las Vegas Arts Commission as a representative of the Ward 6 community. Many thanks to Commissioner Loudon for his dedicated service to support the arts in Las Vegas. Thank you very much. Uh, same, same as uh, Commissioner Trimble and Commissioner Tupaz. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been an honor. I appreciate um, everybody in, in, uh, in the city these last several years uh, helping us out with all this, all this material every month. Um, and uh, I, I do feel we made a, a real difference uh, in our communities. So thank you. Many thanks again to all of you for your service on the Arts Commission. And um, it is Commissioner Tupaz's last meeting before um, your replacement steps in, who I'm sure will I have some big shoes to fill, but um, I think that we're going to carry on and continue um, with the success of the supportive membership we have. So we will miss you and thank you, um, and we'll keep you pointed. Uh, we'll keep you updated as well on those replacement appointments for the other commissioners who are gracefully serving with us um, until we can get that handled. John Pacheco, break out the champagne for him. <laughs> right. Rebecca Holden, I don't have champagne, but I have some exciting updates on some projects. <laughs> so next up is our sparkly Third Street, um, East Ogden Avenue to East Fremont Street public art project. So just to give you an update on that, we've been working, it was a project that was added to the project list and finalized in October. And so we've worked with the project stakeholders for the past several months, meeting monthly with them, really trying to figure out what the parameters of this project is going to be. And so we have enough information now that we can develop that request for qualifications and issue it. And so this is a solicitation that will go through Nevada government e-marketplace. And so it's, it's on the horizon and will be put together and eventually advertised in that fashion, but I'm hoping to have it out relatively soon, so. This is Laura Machado. As you are aware, the Office of Cultural Affairs Public Art Program is working in partnership with Wards 2, 3, 5, and 6 to expand the AMP Utility Cabinet Painting Program. Uh, all of the artists have been uh, contracted. They have picked up their paint and supplies. They've, most of them have provided us with painting schedules. And they are all able to begin painting. Um, so if you see people out in the community painting, um, all of those projects should be completed by the end of May. And we hope to have a celebration for this project sometime in June. And Rebecca has more information on individual projects. Rebecca Holden, so just to show you some updates, we have some photos of the project Eandri Randri Amandroso is working on out in the Centennial Hills area. So his project focuses on uh, birds of the region, I believe. And then also um, some updates from Donald Michael Jr. who's working on some cabinets in the um, Smoke Ranch, Michael Way, Lake Mead, Decatur area. And so this is an image of one of his completed sites. So they're really coming along quite nicely. Laura Machado. Uh, the Office of Culture of Cultural Affairs in coordination with the Plaza Hotel Casino uh, selected Jerry Misco to paint one of the very large Las Vegas Valley Water District backflow cabinets located in front of the casino. You see here the design that Jerry Misco proposed. He began painting on March 29th, and he completed the project on Monday, April 18th. The box is complete. If you happen to drive down Main Street, take a look at it. It looks wonderful. Thank you, Jerry Misco. We are continuing to work on the Charleston Boulevard mural underpass project. Um, we've discussed this multiple times, just here to let you know that we're still waiting on that permit to be approved by NDOT. As soon as we have any information, we will update the Arts Commission. 
Thank you. This is Commissioner Clevin. I have a question about that one. The selected artist that's been on hold for you know a year and a half now, do they have an option to pull out of that? I mean, I don't believe any contracting has happened, has it? No, the contract it has not yet been fully executed because it's pending the permit. If they, ha if they would like to um, move on and uh, no longer be part of it, they have every option to do that. Um, the last that I've heard, they're still interested in working on the project. There will be some maybe negotiations to the contract that we currently have, but we're still waiting on the permit in order to make those decisions. What happens if the artist doesn't want to do it anymore? That's a great question. Um, I guess we would have to go through the process. We also have, so this is our standard. Um, we put out a request for qualifications with selected semifinalists and then selected the finalists from that group. We would go back to the evaluation panel. It could go to the next semifinalist to see if they're interested in the project and we could, that would maybe cut out a little time so we wouldn't have to post the solicitation again. Um, but then it would be whether or not they would be interested in the project. So it would definitely add more time to the overall project timeline. Uh, so thankfully, the artists that are, were selected are still interested in it. Okay, thank you. Rebecca Holden, Chase R. McCurdy has been contracted as the mural project coordinator to oversee the community engagement, conceptual development, and installation of multiple large-scale public murals throughout the city, including within the historic west side. And this project is in partnership with the Maris Fund for Las Vegas Life. We're excited to announce that Chase will be presenting during item nine of today's agenda. And then in the meantime, if anyone has any ideas on mural imagery, content, locations, artists, and general feedback, that can all be emailed to murals at lasvegasnevada.gov. And on to the subject of maintenance and conservation of our rapidly growing collection. The Office of Cultural Affairs conducts regular condition and inventory reports of items in the collection. These reports are used to generate a listing of current maintenance and conservation efforts. Members of the public are always encouraged to reach out with any conservation, maintenance, graffiti concerns, or general collections care items relating to the public art collection at publicart at lasvegasnevada.gov. And I'll also give a shout out that we have uh, one wonderful person right now, Homero Hidalgo, who is overseeing the maintenance and conservation of the majority of our collection, but we're about to have 250 additional painted utility cabinets to maintain. So we have a job posting right now for a technician specialist to work with the public art and gallery program, and that could be multiple positions. So if there's anyone interested in working with us, either to support the public art program administratively or through maintenance or also the gallery program, uh, we really encourage everyone to visit the city's website and uh, consider applying or sharing that opportunity. This is Mary Sabo. We are working with Larger Than Life murals to have a Rose in the Desert mural by Argu that's at the Rafael Rivera Community Center uh, coated in an anti-graffiti coating and then also a UV resistant coating to preserve that mural. Rebecca Holden, I mentioned this, um, Gosh, it was on the staff report last month, so you actually may not have seen it if we didn't have a meeting. Um, but we've been notified that one of the artistic bike racks by Randy Mendre on Casino Center near Charleston has been removed because they needed to place a Las Vegas Valley Water District backflow cabinet right there. So they have it temporarily stored off-site, and then we're going to work with them to reinstall it at a new location. Also, we have some sad news, but it does happen from time to time. We've been notified that the large traffic control painted cabinet by Thomas Vesesti, which is located near the corner of Maryland Parkway and Ogden Avenue, has been removed and replaced with a new cabinet. So we're still waiting on details as to what prompted this, but these are just, they're at intersections and there's cars, and so that's usually the biggest issue is if a car bumps it. Um, or if somebody walks by and just damages the door enough, it's not something that they can just replace a piece, they kind of have to replace the whole thing. So, um, and that's something we're seeing as the artists are starting to get out there and work on the AMP program right now with these new projects is we're getting notifications that there's just maybe a slight bend in the door and then finding out that that prompts a whole new cabinet to be placed out there. So it's just part of the 
challenges in reality with working on these projects, but they exist in the public space for as long as they can, however that may be. And so this is from one of our first, it was the first round of AMP that we'd done back in 2017. And we, to date, have had, I believe, two cabinets removed and deaccessioned just due to needing to replace the cabinets. Additionally, the initiative to install the Nafil sculpture by uh, Sid Baun at the East Las Vegas Community Center is moving along. So we have acquired engineering services for the reconfigure reconfigured placement and the suspension system of the sculpture. And it had already previously passed fire inspection and been approved for installation. So it was originally installed in a vertical setup and so we're just reconfiguring it and figuring out how that engineering is gonna work. Additionally, I had reported that the, there was some damage to the Sankofa symbol and the lighting at the Queen of the Arts sculpture at West Las Vegas Art Center. And High Impact Sign and Design, who fabricated these, has completed the repairs to the lighting and the Sankofa symbols on the Queen of the Arts sculptures, which were designed by Gus and Lena Ocampo Silva and installed a little over a year ago. Also, we are working to assess and address the concerns regarding the condition of the Southern Nevada Law Enforcement Memorial Sculpture by Adolfo Gonzalez. Uh, it was designed by Adolfo and then fabricated by Yesco. And so Yesco's worked with us in the past on some maintenance related to it. And so they're working on a quote right now. Uh, the main concerns are some of the lighting needs to be replaced or repaired. The protective anti-graffiti coating on the plaque is flaking, as you can see in the image on the left there. Uh, and then also there's some abrasions and scratches on the silver finish surface, um, which is most visible at light with those nice up lights. So we're working on getting that done. Um, coming up in mid-May is Law Enforcement Memorial Day as well, and so ideally if we could have that done by then, we will, um, but working to accomplish as much as possible in the meantime. Also, we'd reported about the maintenance and conservation efforts with the snowball in Vegas sculpture. We had issues with the failing graf anti-graffiti coating. So on the left there is a photo of the in-progress process Homero Hidalgo has been working on to remove just the failing layer very carefully so as not to accidentally remove any further layers. And so it's been fairly successful thus far. So that's a big plus for us because it's been looking really rough for a long time, so we're excited that there's, there's some progress in that initiative. Laura Machado. Uh, the Office of Cultural Affairs, well, along with an independent evaluation panel, selected a design proposal by Jig Depio for the Municipal Courthouse Public Art Project. The painting titled Level the Playing Field will be installed in the lobby of the new City of Las Vegas Municipal Courthouse. Uh, Jig finished the painting on March 31st, 2022. You can see here an image of the completed painting. I apologize for the lighting, it's my cell phone. Um, but it is a large scale painting that will go in the lobby. We are awaiting final approval and installation will be set and we'll inform you of that. Hopefully we'll have an unveiling or dedication event uh, shortly thereafter. Thank you. Rebecca Holden Hanlon Sculpture Studio has been commissioned through the Office of Cultural Affairs Public Art Program in partnership with the Ward 6 Office and the Department of Public Works to create a bronze statue to honor fallen Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Officer Igor Soldo. The statue is estimated to be completed by July 2022 and stored off-site until the park is built. Featured below in the images are the photos of the full-scale clay model, which we're currently, um, we'll be issuing approval on that, and then they'll be able to cast the bronze version. This is Mary Sabo. <clears throat> Funding approved at the October 20th, 2021 City Council meeting for a municipal art plan, increasing the budget total to $500,000. A request for qualifications was, to po was posted to the Nevada Government eMarketplace on March 29th, 2022, and closed on April 18th, 2022. Staff is working with purchasing and contracts on evaluation and next steps. Uh, the RTC Public Art Project, the Arts Commission voted on 
91621 uh, to approve a proposed partnership project between the city and RTC. Funding approved at the 10 2021 City Council meeting for a municipal art plan. Staff met with representatives from the Regional Transportation Commission on 11-29-2021 and will be preparing a detailed proposal. Laura Machado. A Larger Than Life by Barbara and Larry Domsky was installed on March 31st, 2022. And the dedication event was this morning, a very windy day, but a beautiful dedication. The sun was out, it wasn't too hot. Um, the large notes you see before you um, really complement the area, very uplifting, very bright, very colorful across from the Discovery Children's Museum, a successful, um, public art project, and um, we thank the Domskys for their hard work. This project took many years um, through the pandemic, and um, if this is a great project that we worked on with Public Works. So we commissioned the artist to do the fabrication and installation, and Public Works provided all of the foundation and lighting. Uh, so this was a way that the Arts Commission could fund just the specific artwork and the infrastructure came from Public Works budget. Um, so I'm thankful for their hard work and the collaborative work that the City of Las Vegas put into this. So, thank you. The Ward 3 Proud Banner Project is coming along. Uh, the Office of Cultural Affairs Public Art Program is working in partnership with the Office of Ward 3 to complete the Ward 3 Proud Banner Project. It was originally presented to the Arts Commission at the August 20th, 2020 special meeting and the October 15th, 2020 regular meeting. A call for artwork was posted to Arts Registry on February 23rd, 2022 and closed on March 18th with 82 submissions. A five person evaluation panel selected 10 artworks to be printed on the banners and we are working with marketing and the Ward 3 offices to develop the banner layout and the distribution of the banners, which will be along Stewart Avenue from Eastern to Lamb. Rebecca Holden, this concludes the PowerPoint presentation. Did any commissioners in person or on the phone have any questions or comments about these items presented or anything in the staff report document provided? This is uh, Commissioner Kern. Did you say, was there any uh, timeline at all on Ogden Underpass? This is Mary Sabo. Um, we are doing, so we are trying to get this project completed uh, within two years. Um, since the request for qualifications closed on April 18th, uh, the next step is evaluating the request for qualifications. And then from there, the evaluation panel will be selecting uh, three finalists to present detailed proposals. And the selection for the final uh, contract award will be made following that. Got it, thank you. Can't wait to see the new home of uh, Nafili and uh, let's see Gig's new piece in the uh, courthouse. Great, any other comments? All right, we're gonna move on to item seven, uh, report on the education subcommittee of the Arts Commission. Um, so right before this meeting, uh, the education subcommittee met to talk about how to bring new artists into public art. Um, so we talked about um, mentorship programs, we talked about virtual programming and round tables. So it seems like we kind of came to um, an agreement on doing something virtual first, since that's something that could be produced faster th rather than the mentorship program. That'll be something for fiscal year 23, so we can grow that program. It will take a year to pu pull it all together. Um, but we will reconvene the education subcommittee in six months to check on the progress of all of these. Um, but again, this was to 
really kind of give new artists an understanding of the process of public art, how to apply, where to look for these open calls, the difference between an RFP and an RFQ, um, and then put them in contact with city staff so that if they do have any questions, they know who to reach out to. So looking forward to seeing this progress, and in six months, we hope to have another report back to the Arts Commission. All right, and then we'll go on to item eight, discussion for possible action, the appointment or reappointment of members to the Arts Commission subcommittees and ad hoc committees. This is affecting all wards. Um, so if we look at our backup, um, staff have put together all of the different subcommittees and ad hoc committees and current membership and they sent out an email asking for people's first, second, third, fourth choices. Those you can see on the next line. So from here, we should discuss who will go on to which committees and then we'll formally nominate folks or reappoint members. Um, so let's discuss. Um, also, if you didn't reach out or if you didn't reply to the email and there are subcommittees, you can nominate yourself to join those committees at this time. Correct? Yeah, and Rebecca Holden, I'll just add real quick. I know we just mentioned earlier we have a lot of commissioners who are terming out presently mm -hmm. and then also in the near future in the next couple of months. And so that's why we don't have responses from some of them about that is because just due to the timing, it didn't seem right sure. to volunteer for those. But we'll probably have to do this again in a couple of months when we get a whole new batch of people. So. Right. Um, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. Mm -hmm. I have a question about this item. Uh, would this be an appropriate time to um, recommend that we consider sunsetting the Main Street ad hoc subcommittee. I do not think that we have ever met and... Yeah, I think this is a good time to remove that, but potentially add additional ad hoc subcommittees if anybody thinks that we need additional subcommittees. So should I formally nominate certain people to be on committees or do people want to self-nominate or do we want to do this today and add it to the agenda for the next meeting? John Pacheco, I think um, uh, it was mentioned earlier that a lot of people are terming out and we should probably wait till after that to do any of this. Sure. All right. Here's Commissioner Hackett Morgan. Basically, looking at the uh, uh, the backup for item eight, I mean, I think you know, I would I would suggest we we move on accepting these uh, nominations to the subcommittees, and I I do agree with the ad hoc subcommittee dropping off for Main Street, but let's move forward with something so we don't so we have some movement on it. We can always add people too. Right. Rebecca Holden, yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, mention while we're talking about these. So the education subcommittee, I'm excited to see this all picking up again. It's great. Um, that's one of the more active subcommittees. And the next one that is most active is the project development subcommittee. So that is the group that um, everybody wants to be a part of because you meet during um, August when the rest of the committee is dark and have a really robust conversation about what the projects look like for the rest of the year, and then come back to the full committee in September to, or the full commission in September to vote on those. So project development is a really big one that as we step into, and we're looking at August and September, um, right now I see member Sandy Carpell is on that right now, member Trimble and member Tupaz are also on that, so I don't know if um, you'd like to look at maybe putting some members on there that are still going to be 
termed in during that time because I just can't guarantee. Um, member Carpell, I think, terms out in July. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if she will be or she can't be reappointed. So if we don't fill that, then she could stay on longer. But if we do fill that position, then um, it would be a vacancy on that subcommittee. And then beyond that, public art advisory um, used last they met was really in in 2017, 2018, because they were helping us about donations of art received, most of them mm -hmm. in relation to one October. And so we've just for the most part, continued to bring donated artworks to the full commission rather than having those subcommittee meetings. Um, so that's not one that's been super active. And then also the fast track subcommittee has never met for as long as I've worked with the arts commission for seven years. So um, at one point it was a, a great idea to have kind of a short list of applicants. Um, but that one, if you wanted to start it up again, you could, but it's also just not very active at the moment and hasn't been for some time. <coughs> Commissioner Hackett Morgan, um, I would be happy to serve on the project development subcommittee. Because why not? Yeah. I know how to pour cement. <laughs> you do? I do. <laughs> this is Com Commissioner Clevin. Can I just have a definition of the fast track committee? Rebecca Holden, the, the fast track, so as it as we have it listed right now, the Fast Track Committee meets once every two to three years. Their job is to help select the applicants for the pre-qualified artist roster list to use when there is a need to fast track a project. Staff worked with purchasing and contracts to acquire this list of artists, which should be updated every two to three years. So we would need to work with purchasing and contracts again, get a whole new solicitation out, develop that fast track, go through all that to get that list, um, and then work with the Fast Track Subcommittee again. So. Okay. It, it doesn't have to go anywhere, or it could go somewhere. It's really up to how the commission wants to go about it. Um, I just don't see anything being ever fast-tracked in public art, so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is a subcommittee that will likely continue to never meet. <laughs> um, but I would I'm also... Sad. <laughs> I would also like to join the Project Development Committee, so I would like to nominate myself for that. Are there any commissioners on the line that would like to join any of these committees? Again, we'll continue to revisit these subcommittees so our new members can join and get more information on the purpose of each committee. John Pacheco, yeah, Member I, Strauss, would, uh, I would be interested in the education committee. Who is it? Who was that? Uh, Member Strauss. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, I would, this John Pacheco, I'd be interested, but I'll make my decision next month to see what, what it's all about and which ones. Okay. Uh, and, and because my term's up in June, so I don't know yet. I'll see if I get picked again. So do I need to call for a vote on the two nominations? Rebecca Holden, I think um, one thing to consider is we cannot have more than six members on any subcommittee because any more than six then counts as a quorum of the full meeting. And so um, I, I'd suggest maybe when you call for that vote, identifying the specific members that would consist of that subcommittee so it's kind of a clear listing of those six people. So it sounds like maybe this should be tabled until next meeting. Or we all, it, I, is there anybody else on the line that would like to join any of these committees? If not, I'm gonna move through nominations of each subcommittee. Great, so uh, for the education subcommittee, um, at this point in time, Mickey, as the chair, is defaulted on all of them. In her absence, is it okay for me to step in as the vice chair, but once she comes back, then I'll cycle off so that it doesn't exceed six? Rebecca Holden, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, attorney and clerk, um, I think it's just six in total, whether Mickey is present or not. 
Um, and so, okay. So whether you're present or not, um, as the vice chair serving in a an ex officio capacity, wouldn't. Um, I'd say if, if you're on it right now, continue to be on it in a chair capacity, because um, I think that was what was voted on last time. Okay. Um, that seemed to go well just earlier. So I don't think there would be a need for you to serve ex officio unless you were wanting to, right? Okay, and can I ask one more time, when is San, um, Commissioner Carpell's expiration date on her term? Uh, Commissioner Carpell, I believe, terms out in July. And okay. so you would really only have um, May and June to meet, and then July would be dark, and then August would be the subcommittee, project development subcommittee. So it might be a good time now to, um, or either, sorry, for either project development or education to see if there's okay. an opportunity. Because I think she, she understands as well that um, she's terming out, and so. Okay. All right, so um, I'll move forward with nominations for the Education Subcommittee as um, me, Jennifer Clevin, Susan Hackett Morgan, Ali Haynes Hamblin, John Pacheco, and David Strauss. For the Project Development Subcommittee, John Pacheco, Mickey Sprott, Susan Hackett Morgan, and myself. For the Public Art Advisory Subcommittee, we have John Curran, John Pacheco, Mickey Sprott. And Fast Track, we have Allie Haynes Hamlin, uh, myself, Jennifer Clevin, John Pacheco, and Mickey Sprott. We have removed Main Street as an ad hoc subcommittee. And I move to vote on the slate of subcommittees that I've just read off. A second. Commissioner Hackett Morgan. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Oh. Can we have um, the, the, uh, the yes votes from everyone on the line one more time. Aye. 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 All right, any opposed? Vote passes. Great, I look forward to more productive subcommittee meetings. Thank you, everyone. Great, item number nine, presentation by artist Chase R. McCurdy, the mural project coordinator regarding the historic West Side mural program, which will be focused within Ward 5. Maggie. I have the pleasure of introducing Chase. The city issued an RFQ last fall, and Chase was selected as the coordinator of a new mural program at the historic West Side. Chase is an artist. He's a third generation native of Las Vegas. In his 10 year career as an artist, he's worked in the mediums of photography filmmaking, painting, drawing, sculpture, and writing. Chase's recent accomplishments include creating five living black pillars in historic Westside Legacy Park, as well as opening a working studio and gallery in the Westside's Nucleus Plaza called 33 Gallery. Welcome, Chase. Uh, uh, thank you, Maggie. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> thank you for your time. Uh, we'll try to keep this uh, running very smooth. Um, so, for the historic West Side project, uh, firstly, an honor to be a coordinator on this project, uh, and uh, the focus in the beginning was to be, was to start with community input. Uh, so, we began with uh, we're beginning with an early investigation into our potential locations and stakeholder wants, uh, an identification of opportunities and weaknesses we have thus far undertaken. Uh, we are currently building a project description in preparation of our RFQ and P process, and we've been developing relationships with community members and key stakeholders in this project. Um, our early location brainstorm uh, was fairly loose, um, but we wanted to keep it to that historic West Side uh, neighborhood, um, focusing on these areas of Jackson Ave, D Street, 
uh, the West Las Vegas Art Center, and the idea of creating temporary walls um, on what are many uh, undeveloped uh, city-owned lots, um, potentially using these spaces uh, in a way to beautify and create like a catalyst for imagination. Um, so just some visuals on uh, some of these spaces, if you're unfamiliar. This is Jackson Avenue uh, between uh, G and looking toward D Street. Um, one of the first things you notice uh, is the lack of development on Jackson. Um, and really in the broader historic and west side in general, and that is something we'll talk more as a, um, a bit of a weakness for this project. Um, this is D Street, if you're familiar. Uh, West Las Vegas Art Center uh, with the focus on the uh, mural walls that they've already started with, if you see on the right, uh, open space for, for a continuation of this uh, project. Um, so, so far, uh, for community feedback, uh, we held two open input sessions at 33 Gallery in Nucleus Plaza, which is on the west side. Uh, these comprised of folks coming in and completing surveys in which we asked them where would they like to see murals, uh, what kind of uh, content would you like to see in the murals, what kind of artists would you like to see create these murals, uh, and really any other input that community members had to uh, share uh, with the hope of, yes, we had our ideas on locations and the rest, but really wanting to build this program around community uh, desires, as opposed to kind of having our ideas and then going to community. Um, in addition, we have an open email for community input. Uh, I have held a number of candid, uh, off-record conversations with key community stakeholders, um, and that's been fortunate, you know, just from my personal uh, history in the West Side and my community relationships. Um, you know, folks being able to really freely say what they feel. And uh, the community input, uh, it will be openly received throughout the duration of the project as opposed to like a certain set date where people can no longer share their, their opinions. So um, the survey results, we uh, had surveys on site and these are the questions. The bolded and italicized responses were the most favored. Uh, so what kind of imagery or content would you like to see in a mural in West Las Vegas? And the number one result was local history of the African American community. Uh, with the close second and third being representations of the current community and a celebration of the culture of the community. Um, so results like these we will use to build our RFP um, to let artists who are applying know this is the kind of uh, work that we would like to see and the community would like to see in this project. Um, also asked what kind of painting style would you like to see for murals in West Las Vegas uh, with the, the greatest response being realistic or photorealistic uh, along with uh, abstract and concepts that are interactive or have some sort of community involvement. Uh, one thing that was, has been very openly shared is the desire to include young people uh, in these processes. Um, so we hope to, with our uh, proposal process, reach out to teachers and schools in the neighborhood and see if they can get their students involved. Um, and once again, where would you like to see these murals? Um, the top two choices, of course, were D Street and Jackson, which are those locations where uh, a lack of development is a, uh, a bit of a weakness in this, prog in this program. So it will require a bit of um, creativity, uh, and we're really exploring every single option to try to make something happen in those areas. And then what kind of, what type of artist would you prefer to see uh, create these murals? Um, a close first and second with local artists and artists with a connection to West Las Vegas. And then once again, that, um, that idea of student artists being involved. So we're gonna really try to make those things happen. So uh, after community feedback and some initial attempts um, at communicating with property owners for s various spaces, we're getting closer to a final location list. Um, but you know, ideally we have the mix of murals on fixed locations as well as, in, if possible, involving these temporary mural wall concepts. Um, you know, this, we'll talk more on this and the weaknesses, uh, but it, to maintain a, a mural project right in the heart of the west side is rather difficult. Um, if you've been in the historic west side in that neighborhood, you understand the, um, the state of development. So we really don't have many large walls for large projects. Um, 
you know, but this is also gives us an opportunity to really do work that is uh, catalyzing in a way. Uh, but finding that um, mix is gonna is a little tough, but we're making it happen. Uh, so the West Las Vegas Art Center team, uh, we're, we've been talking to them. We're sure they'd be open to potentially you know ex uh, extending those walls. Um, there is a you know a. Uh, a small, not um, weakness, but the, the note here is that the walls kind of extend a little far into the parking lot of the park. That's, um, pardon me, Doolittle, kind of to the right of the screen on the other side of the road there. Um, but really, that's a great early potential opportunity for a project uh, and that many folks in the community voted for. Uh, D Street, um, we reached out to the owners of this potentially amazing space. Um, right here with this white wall, as well as Annie's. Um, but the, the white wall here, which looks to be a great location, the, the property owner mentioned um, some very important points. You know, they, they liked the idea, but they felt, and I'd like to share this, they felt that the state of development around um, was not suitable for a mural. You know, the, the property owner said they would like to see a mural, but right now drawing people in to kind of the current state of things um, with some of our uh, some of the vagrancy and, and some of the other things around. Um, she didn't want to bring attention there just yet. You know, and this uh, speaks to um, that broader kind of conversation of the current state of development on the west side, making this a, a bit of a tougher project, but not clearly not impossible. Um, this is another concept that we were thinking of here with the Doolittle Community Center's uh, north-facing wall uh, on Lake Mead. Um, there's potential here for this to be a very large-scale uh, mural, uh, but we would have to speak uh, with the Doolittle team on the continuity of the building with this wall seeming like a, uh, a design effect as well. So want to be sure that they would be open, uh, but this is a great opportunity, th this wall here. And the Marble Manor Community Center, um, I personally work with them on some education for residents, and there was a, a desire expressed to update this current mural within the community center, uh, which is uh, a great potential win, and with everything going on with Marble Manor, uh, a potentially a great um, potential goodwill uh, project for us here. So. And then one more, uh, this is another tough one, um, but just exploring every single option. This is a wall at St. James Church, right there between their parking lot and Mario's Market, uh, just showing that we're exploring really every opportunity. It's a bit of a low wall and a bit long, but this is a, a view just from the road as you're driving by and presents a great opportunity. And we have been in contact with the representative at St. James um, if, they, if we choose to go forward here. Uh, and this, you know, speaks to a, an early concept with potentially building uh, temporary mural walls. We are in the process of reaching out and, pardon me, and uh, sourcing uh, quotes and those put that who could potentially build these these mural walls, uh, with the understanding that one of the uh, large concerns with a, this idea would be to have a plan with what to do with these temporary murals uh, once, say, development began in the area. But this is a, a, a great potential um, to liven up and to bring some energy just to a otherwise um, undeveloped lot that is on a very uh, special uh, street. Um, and that, when tied in with um, imagery of African American history in the city and uh, reflections of the culture of the community, could present a very special opportunity to create work. Uh, so speaking once again uh, back to our opportunities and weaknesses in this process, just once again to be as transparent as possible, um, the general state of development in the core historic West Side neighborhood. So as you've seen thus far, uh, the locations that we have shared with you are all very much in that core uh, West Side community, uh, really maybe outside of uh, St. James, which is a little further out of what we think of really as a historic West Side. But there is a desire to um, really work within this uh, space that so we call the historic west side and understanding the difficulties with development and where things are we are confident that we will find the right the right spaces um, 
And some of the locations that we're finding are uh, privately owned and they either are not interested or they uh, want specific concepts. Um, and we are understanding that we have kind of a limit of you know, commissioning private mural pro yeah, concepts for people. So, um, you know, if, the, if there's not a, a fit, we just kind of, you know, nicely move on and hopefully we can make something work another time. And, you know, with all of with these various weaknesses, this is where our creative solutions come to play, uh, specifically these freestanding walls, um, which, you know, luckily there's an example of with the Washington project, uh, with the recent uh, temporary walls. Um, but we are exploring currently all options um, and we are continuing and finalizing our selection of our first mural project to execute, hoping to have that done within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and we are developing that language for our first project call to get out um, to as many artists as possible and continuing to research and seek our sources to construct these temporary mural walls. Um, and we are compiling uh, potential names of key stakeholders and community members for a mural selection committee. Uh, and with all that said, the city's teams and various departments have been a wonderful help thus far on helping us kind of tie all of these ideas together and see what's really feasible and, and doable. And we just appreciate uh, everyone's uh, assistance as we build out this project. I think that's it. Yeah, thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Anybody on the line have any questions or comments? John Pacheco, yep. that was very well done. Oh, thank you. Trying hard. I really want to do good. <laughs> uh, this is Commissioner Tupaz. Yes, uh, with regards to the survey that you did in your community, yes. who are the main people that were there? Were there just community leaders or just regular residents? It was a lovely, you know, combination. Uh, we had, because the uh, gallery is in the west side, uh -huh. you know, we had some just normal, well, you consider just regular community members. Um, some community leaders have shared their, their input, uh, some via survey, some, you know, just through letting, letting, letting me know since I'm there and some of them know me. Um, and then some folks who are just sincerely interested in the arts and wanted to see a good project came to share their input. Uh, so we've had a, a decent uh, and well-rounded amount of input with the ideal focus and hope being um, those folks who are directly impacted mm -hmm. uh, by this project. And we did receive, you know, one a very interesting, a number of interesting comments. But one I received in conversation, which has really helped uh, some perspective, was this idea um, of approaching this project not so much as creating an art gallery in the West Side, but really um, creating art for and within a community. Mm -hmm. um, so. The, the focus is and has all, it will maintain, will be community that is directly there um, and, and extended, you know, uh, because we understand that, you know, the residential situation, not many folks live in the historic west side, but there are many people who um, regularly are there weekly for a church or other business or other things. <clears throat> Commissioner Tupas, how about the youth? Or are they involved in your survey, like elementary schools, the high schools, the schools around the Attempted community. to get that out. Um, we wanted to do a digital survey. Um, there were reasons beyond my control where that was not allowed to happen. Um, so we opened, you know, to the two in person. We did have some teachers kind of come in, and we established a couple contacts. So we hope to really get our RFP out to teachers so that students can come with their concepts. Um, but, you know, you can always want more on that end. Uh, but I will say, um, working with young people at the gallery, uh, we get them coming in. So I do get their opinions on these things. Um, but in the formal survey sense, not really as many as we would like. Well, thank you. I think what you're doing is great. And, you know, commissioners, yeah. I think we have to applaud this approach. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chase. It's really a wonderful presentation, and everybody's really excited to see what comes out from it. Let's get it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All right. And uh, with that, we'll go on to item number 10, discussion regarding topics for future agenda items. Comments made during this portion of the agenda by individual members shall refer solely to proposals 
for future agenda items and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not such proposed items are within the purview of the commission and or whether such proposed items shall be placed on a future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any such proposed topic shall occur and no action shall be taken. Do we have any proposed agenda items for the next meeting? Anybody on the line? All right, hearing none, we'll go on to item 11, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No subject may be acted upon by the commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record, the amount of discussion on any single subject as well as the amount of time on any single speaker is allowed, may be limited. Anybody from the public, any comments? All right, not hearing any. Um, we'll go to item 12, adjournment. Thank you everybody for a productive meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian Hampton.